morning all, welcome to Selly Park in Birmingham and to another Garden Invaders. Very special day because we have Mr Chris Collins here as our garden designer. Morning Mark. The guest. How are you doing? You know the deal? I think so, I've done a design. I've got to go and build it, but you yeah. give me all the materials I need and the labour. So basically you do all the work. <laughs> That's the deal. <laughs> Only right. catch, yeah. to get the plantage, one of the people who live here has got to answer my gardening questions correctly. So she doesn't get that right, I'm plantless. Absolutely. Right, yeah, all right, yeah, shall yeah. we get on? Let's go. Today we're invading the garden of music promoter Adam Regan and his drama teacher partner Vanessa Parava. They also live with their fantastic 11-month-old baby Delphi. They've lived in this terraced house for three years, but plans to sort out the garden have had to be shelved because poor old Delphi's had serious medical problems. So can the garden invaders rescue their overgrown back garden? Yeah, I've got to get this straight, right? I mean, to be honest, you guys, I hate to make judgments on people when I first meet them, right? But I mean, this garden kind of suits you a bit. Kind of... <laughs> no, what are you saying? No, no, but you know what I'm saying. You know, you're kind of, you know, groovy young things, groovy young garden. I don't think the neighbours are particularly happy with us. No, that's Maybe true. it doesn't suit the young lady in the house either, am I? No, no, not good no. for children. A bit dangerous, no, a really. Mm. A bit dangerous. No. Okay, and obviously Delphi is number one major importance. Just tell us a little bit about Delphi. Delphi's eleven months, and she's had a hard start because she had dislocated hips, and she had to be in cast from four months to seven months. Oh, she's been in hospital a lot. So. Have to do something for her then, eh? Absolutely. Yeah. So, just happened to have tucked away in the garden here. Okay, this. this How keen? This is called homework. Okay. Yeah, this is impressive. I'm impressed with this. this Big time, yeah. <laughs> Who's responsible for this? Me, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> Why are you embarrassed? Because it's here out in the open. It was just a creative moment. Take us through it briefly. OK. Well, uh, the colours, I'm half Greek and I go to Greece all the time and I, I like those hot Mediterranean colours. And the den idea of seating at the back and these exotic tropical plants because of, you know, the Mediterranean again. No one has ever in the history of Garden Invaders, oh, no, no. ever, ever, <laughs> ever done a mood board. You don't know how impressed we are. I am, I am yeah. so impressed. Yeah. Well, clearly you've been doing your homework, so you're going to be doing the questions with me? Yeah. All right, so Adam, you're going to be... I'm grafting. Grafting away mm. in the backyard. All right, we'll leave you two together to talk okay. about that. You're yep. not allowed to hear about this. We're going into your front garden to okay. do questions. Come on, then. Right, Adam, you've described to me what it is you're roughly looking for. Some curves and a, a chill-out area, so no further ado. Let's get this from Penny. Cheers, Penny. Here's your plan. And now, what I've done is I've divided it up basically into three areas. Yeah. Down the bottom here, I've got, like, a herb wheel. Just here, yeah. Yeah, because it's a Fort Mediterranean. That might be appropriate. Then two sort of circled lawned areas, mm. which would be quite nice for the, for the little one to run about yeah, on. Yeah, really nice. And then the top bit's more your adult area, really, because that's your chill-out area. OK. So you've got, like, a barbecue pit and some nice big bamboos and uh, yeah. some seating. And, and this cover is... Well, that's like an awning, that'll be up on poles, so you've got right. something like a shade area. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, so, you happy with that? Yeah, very happy, looks good. That's good, and so, need to get you a t shirt, okay. your own Garden Invaders t shirt. Right, got... right colour for a blue spot. Right. Birmingham City, oh, eh? Oh, yes, sir. And without a doubt, we've got to crack on because there's a lot of stuff to clear. <laughs> Hang on a minute, Dave. I'm into some poppy rescue here. Because Ness and Adam both like the poppy, and it's a shame that they're all getting flattened. So I'm going to come up with a way to save them. I'm going to take a, take a cut in like that, and you can see how much seed's in there. So if I hang these upside down in the kitchen, let them dry out till the seed turns black, I can then sed sow them back into the borders, and we'll have poppy again next year. There we go. Oh, look at this. Your neighbour very kindly has lent us the garden, and look. Delphi's with us. Let me show both of you all the plants that have been chosen by Chris. First group here, we've got the bamboos. I love bamboos and some grasses down there. Gorgeous. That's the first group. Second group, herbs. Beautiful. You want a Mediterranean garden. Definitely. Do you like your cooking? Yeah, I was wondering what that lovely smell was. Mm, I it love wasn't, cooking. And it wasn't me, was it? No, or Delphi. <laughs> <laughs> Architectural plants. Very, Very nice. important. Get some structure in the garden. Mm. Okay. And then seasonal climbers. Wow. It's your job. I know. And I'm talking to you too, Delphi, because it's <laughs> your job as well to get all the all of the plants, okay? Very okay. important. Very important to help mummy. Okay. okay, good. All right, but Daddy has to get the goodies. We've got big bean bag, middle-sized bean bag, and little bean bag. <laughs> okay? And the little ones for you. For baby bear. For baby bear. And some candles and bits and pieces, some chalks. 
for Delphi to play with all the things that will make the garden absolutely perfect. We start over there with the first group, the bamboos and grasses. Okay. First up, black bamboo, but it's only black after two or three years, and it's a favourite garden ornamental in China and Japan. Next up, golden crookstem bamboo, as it's known in the USA. Now, although it looks really exotic, it can survive down to temperatures of minus 30 degrees centigrade. Now, that is cold. And two plants that are often mistaken for each other, Carex frosted curls and blue fescue. Great plants. Very important you get these plants because for me, these are the most important of all the plants you get because they're gonna give you instant stature and height in the garden. I know. Okay. Okay. Here's your question. Right. What's the name given to a plant that loses its leaves at the end of the growing season? Is it annual, deciduous or herbaceous? Oh. Excuse me, I'll just show Delphi this question. Delphi. Got it there, Delphi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I have it back. Can I? Thank you. Thank you very much, Delphi. Deciduous. You're going for deciduous? Deciduous. Can I just check with Delphi? Delphi, are you, are you going for deciduous, sweetheart? Yeah? Correct answer. <laughs> Brilliant! Yes, very good indeed. They're going into your back garden. Ed is the man to carry them across the road. Well, as you can see, we're really starting to make some progress in the garden now. And now it's all cleaned out and the weed, etc., is gone. It all looks a lot, lot bigger. Now, first off, I've marked out my lawn areas. And these are two interlocking circles at stagger to add a bit of interest. And down here, I'm going to have a herb wheel, which I'm going to edge with this lovely red brick. And in there will be sages and basils and hopefully things that Ness can use in the kitchen. Now, I've got all this trellis work to work with here and fence as well. So I'm going to coat this in climbers, all with a different interest. For example, I'll have honeysuckle in there. And that'll add to a really nice evening scent. Now up here, we're going to tear the garden. Dave, you're just going to put a line of sleepers in there for me. It shall be done. It shall be, good man. And up here is going to be the chill out area. This is where they can relax. They'll be seating in a barbecue pit. There'll be another line of sleepers that run along the back here. And behind it, I'm going to plant up lots of bamboos with vertical height. And hopefully there's going to be things like outdoor bean bags, which my man Adam here is going to win a bit later on, aren't you, mate? I'll have a go, mate. I'll have a go. She is such a happy little girl, isn't she? Mm. And yet she's been through so much. How was it for her? I mean, she's been through how many operations? Well, she's had six general anaesthetics, two operations, three operations in total. The name Delphi, presumably, has got a Greek connection. Yeah, it's an ancient place in Greece. That, um, it's where the oracle came from. Yeah. Really? Mm. The gardening oracle. <laughs> She's going to help me today. She is. You need all the help you can get, let me, let me tell you. Your next group of plants up for grabs are the herbs. We have a fantastic group of herbs here, including thyme, sage, mint and basil. Couple of tips here, though. If you're buying thyme, always make sure that the variety you're choosing is fragrant. It should have a very strong scent. And with sage, now, old Ness wanted wildlife in the garden, particularly birds, and this plant is attractive to bees, butterflies, and birds. Here's your question for the herbs. Now, slight difference with this question, it's not multiple choice. There is one answer. You have to get this right. Can you name a variety of salad vegetable that's named after a Greek island in the Aegean? Kos. Kos lettuce. Correct answer. Yeah. Very good. You knew that, didn't you, Delph? Yeah. Fantastic. So, those plants too will be whisked into the garden. Brilliant. Well, it may look a bit chaotic, but slowly but surely we are making progress. I've just heard that Vanessa has won the herbs, which is really good news, because we now can build her wheel. She's also won some bamboo, so she's doing a blinding job. And you'll also see that Dave is making good progress. He's constructed this retaining wall out of sleepers, which is laid on a dry cement bed and bolted together with these big bolts, to keep it nice and secure, which has enabled us to level off this terraced area up here and for Dave to start building the barbecue sunken pit. So how's it going, Dave? Not too bad, mate, not too bad. We're just getting up to the third course now. We're going to put another course on top of that. 
It's got to be as much a heater as a barbecue. You call it a barbecue, but basically the fire will go in there, get that nice and nice and hot, and I've built it to the same size as a build your own barbecue grill kit. So it doubles up as both then? Yeah, it yeah, does. It'll yeah. keep, keep you warm, you know, as the sun goes down. But if you did want to cook some snags for supper time, you can put that on there as well. Top. Dual purpose, excellent. Absolutely. So the, these first two courses, they're below the ground. There's your sunken piece. That's right. And this that just provides an edging above ground. That's so, right. Yeah. So you can you can still feed the fire from the front there. Brilliant, brilliant. What do you reckon, Adam? Is that good? It's looking good, mate. Yeah? It's functional as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's your heater and, heat, heater and a sausage. Exactly, cooker. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just worth pointing out as well, it's like all good designs. You have to amend things now and again. And I was going to have a second row of sleepers on the back here, but as we've looked at the space, we've decided we no longer need that. So I'm just going to fill this up with bamboos, kindly won by Vanessa, and uh, maybe just have a bit of seat in here. So all really is going to plan. Dead comfy, these. Really nice. They're good, aren't they? Hope we win them. Absolutely, and they are outdoor friendly. As well. Which is excellent. So you news. can leave them outside, which is very good news indeed. But you don't need to worry about this, you need to get plants. Okay. Okay, next group up for grabs, the architecturals. Amongst this group, we have two types of New Zealand flax or formiums, Spanish dagger and the New Zealand cabbage palm or cordyline. Now, all these are evergreen. They make a fantastic architectural presence in the garden, but they also look truly exotic, which will be perfect for this kind of Mediterranean star garden. Here's your question. Which sugary substance produced by plants attracts birds and insects to help pollinate them? Is it honey, sap or nectar? Sap. You're going for sap. Wrong answer. <laughs> Wrong Delphi. answer. It is, of course. Del Don't blame. <laughs> How can you possibly blame Delphi for that? That's not fair, is it? What's mummy doing? It is, in fact, nectar. It is, in fact, nectar. <laughs> Never mind, there are more plants to get later, particularly the climbers, which you have to get. But I have nothing to take into the garden now, but I do need to go and check how they're getting on. All right, chill yeah. out. See you later. Bye. So, colour, privacy, den, butterflies, seating and eating, Adam. It's all coming together, isn't it? This, mate, it's very important. It's on the list. Seating and eating. Yeah, Ness's requirements. <laughs> Overall design, do you think it's going to meet with Ness's approval? I think she's going to love it. Yeah? Yeah. I nice really one. Excellent. I need it. to do a bit of a reality check, make sure everything's here. Now, we have curves. Excellent. Lawn coming on. That'll yep. be nice. Excellent. Get in there. Because we have lawn in big letters we'll have... here. Okay. Yep. It's a huge. I mean, I can't believe how big it is, man. I know. As soon as you get rip out all that old foliage and all the weeds, it just expands, doesn't it, big time? It's actually a very big garden. Yeah, it is, it is. It's a real old big one. Privacy, got the Privacy. fences. Privacy, fence go up there. I like yeah. that, yeah. I like yeah. that a lot. And this is nice. It is, isn't it? I think you have to thank your man Dave it's, a little bit for that. Well, I know, I never thank Dave. It's no. Like, so, no <laughs> never, ever. So where are we going to have the kind of child-friendly bit going on here? Well, I think the lawn's obviously quite child-friendly, because you'll be able to roll about on that. But also, okay. there's going to be like a... a some bark here, which is like reconditioned rubber, and that's going to be pretty safe as well. So she'll be able to play right. in this area. There'll be a little table for her to draw on. So it's all, it's all getting there. Because she's not moving around a lot at the moment. No, she isn't, but she, she will be. She will be. Yeah. Because she's yeah. a lovely, lovely girl. All right, yeah. so you've got a lot to do, man. I know, it's still loads to go, but it's getting there. It loads. all comes together in the end, doesn't it? That last hour. That last hour, that mate. That last hour. So what yeah. are you talking to me for? <laughs> get on, on with I go. You've got a lot to I'm do. Go. I know, mate. I know. I know you're my guest, but you've got a lot to do. <laughs> Oh, I'm back from the garden, and may I say, it actually looks a bit like a garden now. Really? Yeah, it's kind of taking, sh taking shape. Next group of plants up for grabs are the seasonal climbers. Beautiful plants. A must, Ness, honestly. Don't put pressure on me. <laughs> Why not? It's my job. Thank you. <laughs> you won't find a better bunch of climbers than this. It contains honeysuckle, star jasmine and a wonderful red climbing rose. Now, the honeysuckle is called mint crisp. Sounds more like a chocolate than a plant, but it flowers almost continuously from June until October. And star jasmine. In mid to late summer, it produces pure white, fragrant flowers, and then its leaves turn bronze in winter. So here's your question for the fantastic climbers. Mm. Three plants in front of you down here. Mm. All I need to know is which of these three originates 
from the Mediterranean. Oh. Any idea what they are? Lavender, obviously, in the middle. That looks like a fig leaf, whether it is figgy or a figgy family. Could it be. has a very Mediterranean shape. Which one? I mean, you spend a lot of time in the Mediterranean. Which one are you most likely have seen in the Mediterranean? I've seen lavender in the med. OK. Well, I would go with lavender then. And you're not going to blame Delphi if this is wrong? <laughs> no, even though that's a figgy-shaped leaf. <laughs> I'll take you through them. OK. That one is Alstromeria, mm. otherwise known as Lily of the Incas. The Incas, of course, come from yeah, South, South America. America. Okay, not Mediterranean. This is Fatsia japonica. Right. Comes from Asia. Brilliant. That is lavender, comes from the Mediterranean. Hooray! Hooray! Yes, we are very pleased, aren't we, Delphi? <laughs> We're hugely relieved. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, well done. We'll get those whisked into your garden. Fantastic. And, and then we've got one more little thing for you to do, which is a bit of a DIY project. OK, okay good. All right, excellent. Yeah. It's gone very well. Now, the lawn is going down pretty fast, as you can see. And once it's down, we'll use the centre pegs and mark our circles and cut it out. Now, when you're laying a lawn, the most important thing that grass is like is drainage. They love sandy soils. And so what we're going to do here is try and mimic this by having a really fine tilth on the surface. And you can see that there. Lovely and fine, like so. So the roots of the turf bond in to this surface as quick as possible. And if you get that right, the turf will go down in a couple of weeks. Just to give you an example of how much turf loves sand, if you go to a football pitch, it's laid on 90% round washed sand. And if you were to cut a section of it out and lift it, the roots would be up to two foot down. So if you want to test your lawn, see what it's like, cut a bit out, and if it's very shallow rooted, you need to provide a bit more drainage to it. But for the moment, we use this lovely tilth to get the, get the turf down as quick as possible. And over here, Ed's doing a sterling job with a herb wheel. And I used a herb wheel because it connects the kitchen with the outdoors and hopefully uh, Ness will be able to pick the herbs, etc., and use them in the cooking. We're going to have a cross here and that means that we're going to have four quarters where the herbs are going to be planted into. And then we'll backfill it with some compost, like so, and then plant it up. And I'm sure you'll agree and make a brilliant addition to the garden. Time to make a mobile. Right. Of course. Of course. Out of? CDs. CDs. Now, how appropriate is that? Because Adam is... A DJ. A DJ. So, a hanging mobile in the garden. It'll glitter in the sun. Mm -hmm. It'll look fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. And actually, probably, Delphi will be really fascinated by this mm -hmm. in the garden as well. So, you've got everything you need here. A load of old CDs. Your cross members, if you like. Little bits of bamboo and stuff there. Yeah. And then, obviously, you need something to tie it all together. Yeah. I've searched long and hard. I've found you the perfect stuff. Okay. okay. It is anti-eject hook link for stiff and hinge rigs. OK. Can't get that from your average DIY store. No, it's fishing line. 70 metres of it, that should be enough, shouldn't it? Should All right, so, so you crack on, build me a mobile. Mark. Yes, sir. Well, China. I know yes. you love a project. I do. Go. Got some bits and bobs for you. Need to make a table for little Delphi. These are offcuts from the garden, aren't they? They are, yeah. Never waste nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, all right. So a little table. Little table for, for Del Delphi. Yeah, for, for the chill out area. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I can do that. And make it safe for you. No, no worries at all. Well, let's get in place, in lads. Here we go. This is a moment of truth. The shade sails going up, and you can see the job it's going to do. They have a seating area inside there, keep them out of the sun in the summer. And also, if they like the sun, you can put a chair down here and catch some rays. Now, for little Delphi, we've got this special rubber bar. Nice safe zone. She can crawl about on that, no problem. And she's not going to do herself any harm at all. And you can see it gives it quite a nice finish against the sleeper. And Dave has put a nice one course of brick round the edge that meets up with the barbecue pit, which will contain the whole area. In go the bamboos, and you can see exactly what I said. They've given it some vertical height, give it some lift in the garden. And also what I'll do, as a final touch, as I put some bark around the bamboos as a touch, and this does several jobs. It helps retain the moisture, protects from frost, and as I said, looks pretty good. And all we need now is some bean bags, so I hope they answer the question correctly and we get them in, because that would be the finishing touch. Come on, Willie. Come on, mate. It's all right. Mind your head. That's it, excellent. Hey, look at you. It's done. Fantastic. Hold it up. <laughs> You're quite pleased with that, aren't you? I am, actually. That's all right. Yeah. Do you think you'll like it? Yeah, I think he will. It will be kind of... 
Um, What's the word you're looking for here? Well, you forget that it's CDs and then it works. You will, and at night, if you have a party, you yeah. can put a torch somewhere or a light and shine it onto it as it kind of spins in the wind. It'll look fantastic. Like a glitter ball. Right, you give me that. Yeah. You pop back inside. Don't take a peek of the garden, though. I'll right. come and get you when the garden's finished, okay, all right? Brilliant. That's fantastic. <laughs> Off you pop. What are you laughing about? Your ridiculous pigeon. Talking about you, Woody. How rude. Now the delphinium really is a special plant and it's quite easy to grow. You can grow it from seed, you sow it around April time, maybe put it in a little propagate with a bit of bottom heat, it will germinate and then you prick it out, harden it off, put it in the ground and it's perennial, it'll come back year after year. But the real beauty of the delphinium are these incredible flowers. You've got, this is a double, so you've got this big thick corolla, but in the centre where the stamen and the stigma are, it almost forms like a landing pad for the bees. So they'll come in, they'll fly in and hit and come down for their pollen. And if you look after them and state them properly, give them a feed once a year, you'll get this magnificent spike of flower time after time. Now, another one of my favourite plants is this Trachospernum. And the first job we need to do with this is really put some vine eyes in, some wire, and get it trained and fanned out onto this fence. Now, we will talk a little bit about plant physiology. If you're a bit worried about plants that are going to struggle, one good tip is always look for what you call a waxy cuticle. That's the covering of the leaf. If it's really thick like that, it means the plant won't dehydrate too easy and it'll take the wind better. Also with this plant, you've got this lovely white flower, which at this time of the year, it's got an incredible scent. Top plant. Making your own garden furniture really is very straightforward. This has got to be the simplest table in the world. All I've used is these planks across the top, evenly space them, use the cutoffs from the sleepers down here. But what you can see I've done is chamfer everything off to try and get rid of as many of the big splinters as possible. And then I'm going to go over it with a belt sander because this table is for baby Delphi and splinters could be a problem. One thing though, if you are planing anything off like this, remember to recess all your fixing so you don't damage the blade on the planer. So all that remains for this, bit of belt sanding, then jobs are good. Un. Big moment for you, Adam. The moment's come. It has. The big question, horticultural question, to get all the goodies you need for the garden to kind of finish it off, to make yeah. it a place you'll actually use. So we're talking bean bags for everybody. We're talking little chalks for Delphi. We're talking 16 candles, I've counted them, mm. and four garden fackle anti muckens okay, which are, I gather, garden torches. Here's your question, guys, good luck. Which perennial vegetable may be induced into early production by placing a forcing jar over it? Is it rhubarb, is it celery, or is it potato? Delph, any help? The, the rhubarb sort of stands out, I don't know why. You're going for rhubarb. That's the correct answer. Fantastic. <laughs> Yay! Oi, you, as if you knew that. Okay, now, I need you, Ness, to describe what your garden looked like first thing this morning. And we're talking now about eight hours ago. Okay, um, there was a fence on the left side and it was squashed down with overgrown poppies and all sorts of wild stuff and it looked hideous. It was a terrible, terrible mess. Time to open your eyes on your garden. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> I am absolutely gobsmacked. <laughs> I can't believe it. it looks massive. It's a lot bigger, doesn't it? I yeah, mean, it it's is amazing. absolutely beautiful. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed. It's stunning. Delphiniums. There's a few things you'll have to do, like the, like because you had quite a lot of weed in there, some will grow back, so keep an eye out for them. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe stay off the lawn for a couple of weeks, keep it watered. Okay. And uh, tie your climbers in, maybe put some vine eyes and stuff and some wire and get your climbers all spreading along the fence there to easily yeah. soften that fence up, yeah? 
A lot of people worry about partitioning up a garden that mm. they might it might make it smaller, mm. and in fact, it does exactly the opposite. Yeah, it enlarges it? the garden. So you've got like here, you've got your herb wheel area. Mm. This is your alfresco area because I want you using the herbs for the kitchen. Definitely. Then yeah. your lawns, your circled lawns, yeah. and then you step up onto your chill out area at the back there for <laughs> your, uh, it's your barbecue. Yeah. But it's not exactly a chill out area because actually it has got a fire pit in it. And you've also got the sunshade, yeah. which means particularly, Perfect obviously, for, for Delphi. Delphi yeah. If she's out and about, you don't want to have the sun on her. So, and for you guys as well, it's just a really nice way of getting shade without your conventional brolly, mm, yeah. um, which is good. Obviously, you've got those massive, great bean bags at the end, <laughs> courtesy of him indoors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well done, Adam, for that. <laughs> well, it's perfect. It's like... I've got the spaces that I wanted, you know, the den at the back and the lawn here and the herbs for the, for the house, for the cooking and the bamboo, which I never thought I'd get. I'm just chuffed to bits, really. It's a huge weight off our minds, you know, we've been waiting a long time. To even address it, but yeah. it's like having a birthday and Christmas for all of us in one. That's I've nice, never had such a big right. present. That's nice, really never nice. Never had such a big present. It was a bit of a pleasure for us to do it, wasn't it? Because of Always. the Delphi and stuff, you know, that was... Uh, that yeah, just nice gave right. it an extra nice that angle to it all, I think, yeah. Definitely. Thank you so and much. That's, and somebody's having a birthday party very soon. Mm. your birthday's going to be in this garden. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you Cheers, so you're much. welcome, welcome. After the garden. All right, cheers then. See As the guests, sir, yeah. how, how do you feel you got on? Today? I've enjoyed myself, eh? I didn't think it would do too bad. All right, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be sending a note home to your mother, obviously. All right, sure, I can't do no wrong in her eyes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Could do better, it will say at the end, obviously. No, yeah. top job, mate. Really, Cheers, really, mate, thank really you. Nice enjoyed garden. myself. That's another garden sorted. We'll see you next time. Before we go, by the way, mate, what's the difference between this and a mood board created by a proper designer? Probably not a lot, really, eh? This one will take longer to burn. <laughs>